All right, folks. So it looks a little different today. That's because for some stupid reason, uh, the OneNote program doesn't want to work today. So we're using a phony version of it. Whatever, life goes on. So today I'm not here, obviously. <laughs> I guess it's obvious. And oops, that's no, that's not optimal. Go away. I don't want you here. Go away. Um, I don't know what to do. Oh, here we can do this. Nice. There we go. <laughs> So what I want to talk about today is uh, trig identities, okay? And so, you know, why? And then, uh, you know, a little bit of how. We'll do a little fooling around with a couple of them just for fun to say we did it, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's the idea. So again, the idea here for us in this class primarily is to take something that's ugly and make it prettier. Now, remember, pretty is in the eye of the beholder to some degree. And uh, when I say pretty, I mean, you know, it's easier to factor. It's easier to integrate, differentiate. A couple of terms we'll talk about later on. Um, sometimes not easier, just it's possible now. It was impossible, now it's possible. So technically that's easier. I feel like that's infinitely easier because now it's doable, okay? Well, but you're like, well, it's kind of hard though, isn't it, Groom? It is kind of hard. So some of those are hard to do. Like, you know, even though you made a conversion and it's still hard, it, yeah, but it's doable, okay? So a couple of things we're going to look at. We mentioned this one last time. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Remember that comes about from in the unit circle. Here's your x angle. There he is. How exciting. How cute. This is 1 there. This is the cosine of x down here on this side. This is a right triangle. This is sine x. Uncle Pythagoras would say sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. That is the Pythagorean identity. Of course, you could write it like this and vice versa okay Pythagorean identity is huge we'll use it a ton it's a lot of fun it's nice whatever now we'll also look at remember we talked about previously a hey, tangent is what tangent of x is of course sine x over cosine x and of course cotangent cosine over sine right and of course secant's one over Cosine and, and cosecant 1 over sine. So all those are technically identities as well. A couple other ones we'll see is the additive ones. So if you had the cosine of x plus y, I'm going to write plus minus y. That means it's the exact same thing. It's the only difference is you're adding or subtracting here. That will be on the other side be doing something else as well. This is equal to, and I'm not going to prove it. That's not the point of this class. We'll just use it. The cosine of x times the cosine of y minus or plus. Notice that if you add on this side, if you add on the left, you're minusing on the right and vice versa. <laughs> sine x, sine y. Beautiful. Now, the one we're going to deal with about this one is, and when I was a kid, they're like, hey, Jay. Can you find the cosine of 45 degrees or 15 degrees? Exactly. Why? Yes, Mr. Lane, I sure can. That's 45 minus 30. Wait, that's the cosine of 45. Oh dear. Times the cosine of 30. Oh wow. Minus. No, my already minus over plusing over on this side, pal. Plusing. Uh, the sine of 45. Good night, nurse. Why isn't this piece of crap writing now? There. Thank you, uh, worthless piece of garbage. Now, now you'll write, but you won't erase. I got you. What in the hell? Now it's going to sign 45. Sign 30. Whoa, groom. Bro, this thing is starting to get on my nerves. There we go. Cute. Root 2 over 2, of course. Why aren't you writing? One moment, please. One moment, please. One must get pen out of one's purse. And try a different pen. Let's try this one. This is so annoying. This is the stupid tablet I use every friggin' day, and now it doesn't want to work. I don't understand. Why do you hate me? Root 2 over 2. 
Cosine would be root 3 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 times a half. Oh, that's exciting. That's the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4. Bam! There you go, baby. There's your cosine of 15 degrees. Okay, cool. That's nice. If you're on Gilligan's Island, you're the professor. You're coming up with some new, new contraption. I don't know what you're doing. You're, first of all, if you're stuck on a deserted island, your first overall, your very first thing should be working on your overall base tan, okay? You just, you're on a deserted island for crying out loud. Let's work on a tan, bro. Better not be tan lines. Number two, get your fishing pole, all right? Let's hook up some fish. Let's do a little fishing. That's a good time. You haven't had time to do that. Let's work on that, okay? Then get you a hammock, all right? Maybe some drinking water, all right? This idea that you're going to sit around and try to get some coconuts to turn into batteries to run the little transistor radio you're a million miles away you, come on pal what are you doing that's ridiculous anyway i'm just saying that always annoyed me about the professor now on this one here so there's that but with more importantly the reason we'll do this is because what we are going to want to do <coughs> i don't know where i was going with that we are going to be doing things like this hey um what if you had the cosine of 2x? I don't know. All I know, that's the cosine of x. Oops, plus x. Right? x plus x. You're like, oh, it is, groom. So it'd be the cosine of x times the cosine of x minus the sine of x times the sine of x. Hey, you're right. Nice job. And so if I do this, I get cosine squared minus sine squared and this is equal to the cosine of 2x that is an identity okay this is often disgusting in a, in a calculus class that's kind of pretty right there that's easy to mess with but wait groom i feel like uncle pythagoras said that one minus cosine squared is sine squared by george he did sort of and so if you plug that in you're gonna get cosine squared x minus 1 minus cosine squared. Whoa. That becomes a minus 1. This becomes a plus. You end up with 2 cosine squared minus 1. That is also equal to that. And it turns out that this one also is by the same approach. So those identities are what are called the double angle identities. And for cosine, there happens to be three of them. Okay, this guy here, this guy, and this guy. They are all the same. The only difference is, of course, you've done a substitution either for sine squared or for cosine squared. Now, sine has one too, because I know you're thinking, what about sine? Are you leaving sine out, group? No, I'm not. So the sine of x plus or minus y is equal to the sine of x. Um, what are you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing, Jay? Uh, let me back to here. You can do it either way you want to. I usually write cosine x, uh, sine y, minus plus. No, plus minus, plus minus, sine is plus minus. There you go. Cosine y, <coughs> no, I'm sorry, darn it, sine x, cosine y, sine x, cosine y. There you go, cool. And uh, in that cute and all, that's that's lovely. So then, what happens is this: uh, if you had the sine of two x, well, that's the sine of that's x plus x, obviously, and so that'd be cosine x sine x plus cosine x sine x, which is equal to two cosine x sine x. We will use both. We'll say, we'll, sometimes we'll trade this one in for that guy, and oftentimes we'll go the other direction as well in calculus. Uh, so that's the double angle identity theorem. The double angle for, um, it's the double angle for, uh, come on, use your words, Jay. It is the double angle for uh, sine. Nice. Now, does tangent have one? Yeah, it's in your book. I'm not going to go through that one. It isn't one we use a ton. It's there if you're if you need it, you can use it. Hint, you won't need it. Uh, yeah. So let's go here. Let's uh, see if I can get a new page to pop up. Well, uh, uh huh. Insert. 
New page. What can I do? New page, dog. <sighs> For crying out loud. There we go. Nice. All right. There we go. We now. You're like, okay, that's a cool groom. Uh, so I can go back and forth on those guys. Yeah, absolutely. Those are really neat, really nice scenarios there. Uh, there's some other ones we'll look at momentarily. But one of them happens to be this guy. So suppose you had this, uh, cosine. Oops, what just happened? Cosine of 2x. We just had this one a minute ago. Is equal to 2 cosine squared. Minus one, right? You said that. Now, suppose instead of one, suppose we have, suppose we have like for instance, suppose you have, uh, suppose you know what the cosine of fifty is. Good for you, nice job, bud. But you would like to know what is the cosine of twenty-five. Okay. Well, isn't that half? Yes, twenty-five is half of fifty. Will the cosine be half? No, because it's not linear, you goof. So what we're going to do is we can actually solve for this cosine right here. Now watch me follow what I'm doing here. I'm going to plus 1 to both sides. And normally the big kids write 1 plus instead of, you know, this kind of deal right here. So you're left with 2 cosine squared x. I'm going to divide by 2. Bam. And then I'm going to square root. So the cosine of x is equal to the square root of 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2 and it's plus or minus and why is it plus or minus well because for instance suppose you had right here there's 120 degrees yes okay so if I knew that guy I could find the cosine of 60 so you're like show me groom I, I want to know I, inquiring minds want to know of course they do so when we do this problem okay okay now remember the key to remember is this is this is the this is the 120 one right so what normally happens is, is that we say we're going to refer to this here as your x. And we say that this is half of x. These are what are referred to as the half angle identities. Okay? And so let's say you start off with this. You're like, hey, what is the cosine of 120? So that would be 1 minus a half over 2 plus minus. So if you did 1 minus a half, you get what? Uh, you get a half. And a half divided by 2 is a quarter. And the square root of a quarter is? Why, it's a half, groom. Plus or minus? Well, 60 degrees is in quadrant 1, so clearly it's positive. Okay. Uh, let's say you did uh, 270. 270 is right here. Yes. And then half of 270 puts you at 135. Is that right? Yeah, 135, which is in here somewhere. Nice. Cosine is clearly going to be negative in that quadrant. And so if you do that, check it out. Check it out. So if you did 1 plus 0, because the cosine of 270, oops, the cosine of 270 is 0. So 1 plus 0 is 1 divided by 2 is a half. The square root of a half is, well, lo and behold, that's the square root of 2 over 2. No way, way. Which is it, plus or minus? Well, we're in this quadrant, so the cosine is negative. Bam. So that works for all of them. Okay, we don't really do that a ton that way. But what we will do is we can actually substitute one of these for the other one in a function. You do the same thing with sine. <laughs> That's also equal to cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x over 2. No, over, not over 2. Yes, no. No, 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 no. Not over 2 yet. It's going to be over 2 pretty quick. There you go, dummy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play musical chairs. So 2 sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2x divided by 2. And then now square root both sides plus minus. There you go. And then, again, what the big kids do is they say this is the half angle. This is the whole angle. It's still the same relationship. 2x to 1x is also 2 to 1. and that's. But these are the half angle identities. And the only two that we'll really ever use are sine and cosine. Okay, that's just, that's just it. So pretty nice. Pretty easy. Pretty easy money. Um, oops. 
One moment, please. All right. So, for instance, suppose you... For instance, suppose you were asked this problem. Not sure we're going to be, but... <laughs> um, and so, if uh, this kind of a problem presented itself... Uh, this is what you would do. Suppose you were asked to prove the identity okay if you're asked to prove the identity the way this works is you you need to make one side look like the other side. Now um, I like to think of it this way. Go into the you go into the beauty saloon, you get your picture of Justin Timberlake. You're like, I'd like to look like this guy. Okay? Well, they don't go find him and ugly that dude up. Okay? Make him have no hair. They say, look at that, check it out. The guy's got half a head of hair. Looks just like you, groom. Uh, <laughs> well, um, well, I feel like uh, I wanted his hair, bro. What are you doing? That's weird. Yes, we look alike. But I would like it to be the uglier side looks more like the prettier side, if you will. Okay. Likewise, you go into the store, you go to the, you go down to the, um, the plastic surgeon. Hey, I look like Cindy Crawford, circa 1994. You know, they don't go out and then they, they don't find her and you know and change her and make it look like you. That's weird. Okay. Technically, technically, that would mean that you're equal, but that's weird. Okay. Likewise, we don't. Uh, you know, gonna make you look a little like give me some more hair, like frost the tips of what hair I have left, like Justin Timberlake. Meanwhile, making him half bald like me. That's weird. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the quote unquote uglier side, the side that has a little more to work with. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, you walk in, the guy's got three noses on his face. He's like, you're the, you're the plastic surgeon. You're like. Uh, can I help you, sir? Well, obviously you can help me. You need to three noses. Let's lose a couple of those things. That's weird. You know, let's just get that fixed. It's pretty obvious where to start. That's a, that's an issue. Let's get that knocked out real quick. Okay. So on this one here, I would argue that the left side is the uglier side. Why? Well, there's a fraction there. Fractions are always, you know, fixable-ish. Also, cotangent itself is a fraction. So that's going to be cosine over sine. <coughs> Explain to me somebody how it is. Every time it freaking starts to rain, my allergies start to kick up. It makes zero sense. Okay, again, leave JT alone. Okay, don't go find him and ug him up to make him look like me. That's just plain weird. Okay, you get a common denominator on top. That's going to be sine x plus cosine x all over sine x on top. If you don't remember that, it's going to be sine x sine x there you go q one divided by sine x but groom again leave my boy alone that's weird now if you invert and multiply bloop, the signs are going to cancel off and lo and behold what do you got mr groom now looks like jt nice Ta -da! how cool is that okay uh, pretty easy. They're kind of fun. I've always, I always kind of enjoyed them. Uh, they were, they were one of those things. They were one of the few things in math. When I saw them back in the day, you didn't have to encourage me to do it. They were kind of fun. Um, it's one of the few things you didn't have to encourage me too hard on to do. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, oh, here we go. This the ugly one. <laughs> this one here. Very cool. Cosine squared x over 1 plus sine x is equal to 1 minus sine x. Room, which one's the ugly side? Uh, if you need to ask, you've got problems, pal. It's this side over here with the fraction, obviously, is the ugly side. How do you think about that for a minute? If you... There's lots of ways to screw something up. So this one on the, on the right, it's pretty much as... I mean, it's pretty much as small as it can be. I mean, I could square it, times it, this, that. I could do all kinds of goofy things. And that's fine. I could change it, I could change it around a little bit or whatever. But the problem is, is that you don't know where to go. 
The side on this side, the left side, has more places kind of where to start from. If only I knew what cosine squared was. Oh, wait, I do. Uncle Pythagoras says it's this. Hey, that guy factors. Again, leave my boy JT alone. And then, whoosh, whoosh, there's a one minus sign is equal to one minus sign. Ta-da! Verifying, verifying identities are pretty easy to do. And again, that's not what we'll actually use them for in this class. Mostly what we'll use them for in this class is to rewrite things like, you know, we want to get rid of sine squared somehow. So we're going to rewrite that as a double angle cosine of 2x or something. That really makes my life way easier. And that's what we'll use them for. That's all we are. That's why when we're looking at these, that's all we really want you to focus on. Uh, suppose I told you this. Suppose that the sine of x is equal to point 0.4. And furthermore, suppose I told you that we are in quadrant 2. Find the other five trig ratios. Find the other five trig ratios. Nice. Well, I feel like... Oops, first of all, I should probably draw it correctly. Boom, 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 point 0.4, yes. Wait, but doesn't that mean that one? Well, yes, I actually. How would I find the bottom side down here? Well, the bottom side is given by what? Well, Pythagoras' theorem, yes. And so, one minus, I need a calculator. Oh, for crying out loud. Da, da, da. Calculator. Excuse me. One minus 0.16. That's just 0.4 squared. Yes. And squirt that sucker. 0.91. Is that true? 0.916. I'll try that. So if you do this. If you don't believe me, you can just go 0.916 squared plus 0.4 squared. Oops. What happened? Oh, you hippie. All right, 0.4 square plus 0.916 square. 0.999. Basically one, okay? That's pretty sweet. That's sweet, Hoss. Now, we look at this problem, you're like, oh, okay. So what would my other trig ratios be? For instance, tangent would be equal to 0.4 over, over over uh, 0.916 negative of course don't forget that divide this out give me a decimal it's about negative a half ish i suppose right negative 0.45 ish or whatever right cotangent same diff uh 0.916 over 0.4 negative of course secant is uh one over 0.916 that's negative of course cosecant two and a half it is 1 over 0.4. Or, yeah, 1 over 0.4. And then, uh, who are we missing? Oh, cosine, of course. Negative, right? Nice. What if you did... Uh, if I told you that the, co the tangent of x is equal to negative 4... nines and what if i further told you that the cosine was positive <laughs> find the other trig ratios okay sweet i got you so we know that we have to be in either quadrant two or quadrant four because the tangent is negative but this is where the cosine is positive so we're over in here somewhere that's how we know right and so opposite over adjacent for ninths, yes? But groom, this won't fit in my, this isn't going to fit in my uh, unit circle. We're not done yet, Haas. So it's four square plus uh, nine square is 97. This side here is the square root of 97. 
Now, we can do this a couple of different ways. Now, it's up to you. I, honest to goodness, I do not care. I do not care. Clearly, cotangent is negative 9 fourths, right? Cosecant. Now, that would be, uh, well, it would be 1 over sine, but it would be hippopotamus over opposite. So, squirt 97 over, over 4. And, of course, that's negative. And, of course, sine negative 4 over squirt 97. And then cosine is, as promised, positive. So it would be 9 over squirt 97. And then, of course, secant 97 over 9. That's one way to do it. You could also just divide it everybody by the square root of 97. And lo and behold, now it fits into my unit circle. It gives you the exact same answers, though. Okay? Okay, I hope that feels good to you. Um, that's kind of what I want you working on. Finishing up 1.4. Can't be here today. Uh, next time we'll be in 1.5. And, and 1.5 is all about um, inverse functions. So we'll spend some time on that. Uh, I also anticipate talking about logs and inverses on Thursday. Okay. All right, finish up 1.4. Peace out, homies. Have a great day. You're swell. I miss you. <laughs> it's true. I